Coming up, the president and CEO of GB Power says the company had no choice but to increase consumer power bills. The Freeport Container Port making a major investment. And community tourism on the island of Bimini, our Italia Hall explains. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Roll Parkinson. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news amidst great backlash from the Grand Bahama community, President and CEO of the Grand Bahama Power Company is explaining why they had no choice but to increase consumer power bills across the board. For the average customer, residential customer that is, you will have to pay an additional $7 on your bills and for the average business customer, around $24. But this is average, which means it could be more or less depending on the consumer's consumption. The president and CEO of the Grand Bahama Power Company defending the decision to implement an increase in the cost of electricity come April 1st amidst a backlash from the community. He says the company has spent over $15 million on restoration efforts following Hurricane Dorian back in September, and those funds will be recouped through a storm recovery and stabilization charge. It works with a cost of service regulated utility is we have to get those costs back from customers. Now, the way we try to do that, to be fair to all customers, because it's hard times for all of us, is to try and spread that over a long period, so it's not a shock. So we'll be spreading those charges over a five-year period. Um, and the average charge uh, per kilowatt hour is one cent per customer. So it's one cent per kilowatt hour. And that's how we calculated for the average residential customer, about $7. For 40% of our customers, it's less than $4 uh, a month. The question many have asked is, where is the power company's insurance? And why does this cost have to be passed on to its consumers? McGregor explains. So I saw some of those comments online today as well. It seems to be a big, a big concern. So with our transmission and distribution system, that's the, the poles and the wires you see behind us and all across the island, they're not insured. They're uninsurable. No utility in the world, I, maybe not the world, certainly no utility in the Caribbean um, can insure those. We've tried, we've failed. Um, insurers will not insure that. Now our power plant, which was heavily damaged by flood and remains heavily damaged and probably probably won't be um, you know available till the end of the year that was covered by insurance and therefore the customers won't see the impact of that but the transmission and distribution system which affects all 19,000 of our customers is uninsured but six months after hurricane dorian many residents throughout grand bahama remain displaced unemployed and find themselves on hard times we asked mcgregor why now there's, there's, there's never a good time, is there? there absolutely never a good time. Um, what also doesn't work um, is kicking the can down the road. And it's like not paying the credit card bill and just piling up those costs and those interest costs as time goes on. So you're just pushing a problem down the road. That's what, that's what people see in Nassau. That's the problem with BPLs, pushing problems down the road. You have to address them now. Yes, it's hard. Yes, we're sorry. I mean, all our employees are customers too. Uh, we didn't want to have to do this, but unfortunately the reality is we live in a storm zone. We get storms, we're still paying off Matthew. We get storms every three years, it seems. And we need our company to be in a, a stable position so we can handle the next storm. Now, back in 2016, Hurricane Matthew caused some $25 million in damage to Grand Bahama Power, which consumers are paying for through GBPC Rate Stability Plan, which is in effect until 2020. And that's granted if the funds are recouped by that time. Well, the Grand Bahama Christian Council is stating its position on the increase. Council President Pastor Robert Lockhart says now is not the time for any additional charges. Megan Shepard picks up this story. 
president of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Reverend Dr. Robert Lockhart, opposing the storm recovery and stabilization charge set to be added to Grand Bahama power bills this April 1st. Reverend Lockhart says taking into consideration all that residents on this island have gone through post-Hurricane Dorian, he believes this charge is an unnecessary burden. The Bahamian people are also dealing with trying to get their lives back together, um, um, home repairs, um, business repairs, and as we have seen, many the majority of businesses and homes were not insured, so persons have to do, the majority of persons have to do this out of their pocket, and it's going to be a very slow process. So I think adding any additional costs um, um, is an extra burden on the Bahamian people. He says he feels that this charge should not be a consideration at all. But if the power company feels it is necessary to implement, then it should have been done at a later time. And I would have um, wished and hoped um, that the power company would have um, considered um, doing something like that at a later date when the, when the community is in a better position, when um, um, uh, jobs are starting to come back on stream, businesses are reestablished, homes are more reestablished, especially those that can be, um, um, the employment rate is probably back down to a normal area, then I think it would be um, appropriate for the power company to say, hey, things have cost such and such, and we want to recuperate some of that cost, and then maybe an additional cost considered by then. I think now is a bad timing, and, and just put added pressure on the people of the community. Reverend Lockhart continues to work closely with the public post Dorian. He says that the general consensus of residents is that they believe that the recovery process is moving too slowly. I think people have felt that um, help hasn't come as fast as they would have thought or anticipated. And so I think that's very frustrating for some persons. I think some persons are um, also wondering, I think um, a lot of persons, even though the, the assistance that was announced by the government, um, for a lot of persons, they still know that they are going to be short for even with those assistance and so I think some persons are wondering especially persons who have lost their jobs especially single parents homes or homes where both husband and wife have lost their jobs persons who have had to move from Abaco to Grand Bahama um, um, I think persons are wondering how am I going to make this happen Megan Shepard ZNS Network News in other news, the Minister of Disaster Preparedness and Reconstruction giving an update on the island of Abaco. Tonight, he says, the ministry will also seek to strengthen communication on that northern island. Minister of State for Disaster Preparedness and Reconstruction, Aram Lewis, says there's much progress when it comes to the cleanup of Abaco following Hurricane Dorian. If you look at pre-Dorian, immediately post-Dorian, and where it is now, Anyone who says we have not been making tremendous progress will be disingenuous, will not be honest. If you look at the island of Grand Bahama from west end to east end, crews on the ground, cleaning, and I'm getting calls all the time. Wow, I appreciate the work that Mr. Pinder is doing, that Mr. Wild Goose is doing, Mr. Gator is doing, Mr. War is doing. They're doing a tremendous job in terms of cleaning up. We're cleaning up. Materials are now coming on the island. The, the home repair program has now been launched. Um, we believe that we have a system that is going to work well. As progress continues, there has been criticisms levied against the new ministry for the lack of information regarding initiatives on the island. However, he says they have done their best to ensure, in particular, when it comes to the home repair program, the persons on Grand Bahama and Abaco were facilitated, even if they were in Nassau. All of the Abacondians are not in Abaco when you have meetings in Abaco. All Abacondians are not in Nassau when you have meetings in Nassau on their behalf. So you'll always have a gap in there. Now, how do we fill that gap? It's up to us. And we're asking persons to use social media for not just for gossiping and, and for spreading um, 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 fear monger or, or fear mongering. Let us use it for the right reason. If you know something is going on, you can alert your neighbor. And if you find information out, tell them what, what transpired. He contends that the government is working. I've heard talks um, about the member of parliament for North and South Africa um, haven't done anything, haven't met with their people. But you can see clearly there were town meetings that they attended, that they, they um, uh, 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 spoke to, spoke to what happened, what is happening and what will happen. But you still have persons saying they haven't seen them, they haven't heard from them, they don't know what they're doing. But Lewis admits that they will work to tighten communication for the benefit of all. We have to go now and, and, and dissect our marketing strategy, our PR strategy, and wherever there are gaps, we need now to fill those gaps, ensure that the message is consistent and the message gets out to everybody. 
Now let's go to Bimini, where residents on that northern island are preparing for a big economic boost. The Ministry of Tourism is playing a leading role in this effort. Officials hosting a seminar focusing on business opportunities that are expected to unfold. Italia Hall has the story tonight. In just a few weeks, the island of Bimini is expected to receive a major boost as a new cruise ship will begin traveling to that northern island on a regular basis. A new cruise port was recently constructed near Resort World Bimini to accommodate the new addition, the Virgin Voyages cruise ship that is based in Florida. The seminar was organized to prepare Bimini residents for business opportunities to come. Janet Johnson of the Tourism Development Corporation says almost 3,000 passengers will be on board that cruise ship. We, they'll be able to mingle and move about and go into the town and uh, interact with Biminites, um, purchase toys, uh, go on, uh, go into the mangroves, learn about Martin Luther King and Ernest Hemingway and all of the legends that have been here in this destination. And so we wanted to help to prepare them to think about their businesses, um, uh, what, how they've started it, how to develop it further, and how to sustain those businesses. Coordinator of the Bimini Tourist Office, Jason Springer, says business owners will also be learning various practices that are necessary in order for their businesses to thrive. Some of the right practices are developing um, customer service skills, uh, business business um, enhancement programs and um, making sure that, th that these persons are ready. Um, Bimini is a very small island. Um, to be prepared for 3,000 to 4,000 persons from the cruise ship is a, is a high demand and we, we want to make sure that they are prepared. Dean of Graduate Studies and Research from the University of the Bahamas, Professor Vig Nair shared some key tips with the business owners as well. I'm taking them through a step-by-step -step approach in, in preparing, in developing and sustaining a community-based tourism product. Uh, as you know, uh, to, the Bahamas is the Bahamas has a lot of community-based uh, uh, product. But the biggest problem they face is they do not know how to take it to the next level. Senior advisor for the Small Business Development Center, Winston Rule, also on hand for the seminar. He says the organization realizes that they do not have a local representative on the island. We felt it was a good opportunity to come and see what the need was and how we could assist. Um, secondly, if the Tourism Development Center are preparing these persons, these businesses, to take advantage of the, uh, uh, the opportunities that's coming towards them, we want to make sure that these businesses are in a position to, to really expand expand their offering and be able to provide good quality service to the customers that are coming. And it's more than just funding. Uh, funding is only one aspect of it. Um, obviously, there may be some um, business development needs that these businesses may have. Now, this is a three-day seminar. The final session is expected to be held on Saturday, February 29th, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. right here at the Big Game Resort. Reporting in Bimini for ZNS Network News, I'm Italia Hall. Well, Bimini resident and business owner Leonard Stewart says it was important for him to be a part of the seminar for several reasons, and he's looking forward to the new development. I'm a business owner. I'm a born and raised uh, Bimanite. I've been working in the uh, tourism, uh, basically, industry for over 50 years. I'm just retiring from the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism after 17 years, and I'm head to the uh, CBT, cust uh, community-based uh, tourism, and I'm looking forward to... Uh, Improving my business. I have a, a car rental uh, business here on the island, and I'm looking for another unique uh, business that I can bring to the table to uh, sustain the island of Bimini and to uh, welcome our new visitors to our island. Business owner Rosalind Ramsey is also encouraging other Biminites to take advantage of the three day seminar. I've learned a lot. I learned that, you know, we're going to have a lot of tourists, so we're going to have to be prepared for everything that. that it's going to be offered here. So we have to be on top of things because Bimini is a small island and we're going to be having a lot of tourists come in. So we have to be on top for everything.
the news, the Freeport Container Port investing $5 million in new straddle carriers for the transshipment terminal. The straddle carriers, manufactured by the Finland company Kalmar in Poland, were shipped fully assembled directly from Poland to Freeport. According to engineering manager Charles Stewart, it took nine months to build the machines and the units arrived set to operate. Stewart says the straddle carriers were built with the latest in technology, including the latest in global positioning and safety. The hybrid straddle carriers will go into operation within the next two weeks. CEO of the Freeport Container Port, Godfrey Smith, noting that Hutchison has a global commitment to improving the environment wherever they operate. Adding that these world-class hybrid units will be operated by trained and talented Bahamian drivers and maintained by an all-Bahamian team of trained and certified engineers and technicians. The addition of the seven new straddle carriers brings the fleet count to 65. The container port says the machines are needed to meet increasing customer volume demands. You're watching The Bahamas tonight. Stay with us. There's more news right after the break.